Hey you guys, welcome back to The Traveler. Today is episode 14. We're excited to start a new week. We hope everyone's week has been off to a great start. We have some news today. We have some travel news today we're excited to fill you guys in on. And we just wanna say thank you guys so much for all the support everyone watching the videos and sending us feedback. We appreciate it all. Thank you guys so much. Just a couple housekeeping things. If you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, click the link, hit subscribe, hit the thumb, hit the bell, hit all that and let's get in to today's episode. You know what that means, guys. It's time to board your flight. We're taking off. I haven't got this question yet. I really, I truly haven't, but I'm just going to assume that some people have been thinking about what's the reason behind these videos and, and the series. So today we're gonna talk about it briefly. I guess the reason I started this was because I think travel, there's a lot more life to it than we're making it out to be. I think it's a little polished. I think it's a little corporate. And I think now more than ever, we need to spruce things up. I love working in the industry. I love talking about things in the industry and I love being the guy that people can come to and reach out to and ask me questions about, you know, what do I think about this? What do I think? Have you ever been here? Uh, what kind of advice can you give? Whenever that opportunity has been there, I've always wanted to kind of commit myself and, and put forth as much effort as I can to, to help that person out, to help that group out, to kind of shed some light on, on the information and the experience that I have, because I think that's what it's all about. You might not be able to take me seriously in this hat, but it, I like the bucket hat look. I really believe that these videos can only get better, and I believe they are getting better. There's been some shitty episodes, there's been some good episodes, but we're learning and we're growing, and, and we hope you guys find it entertaining. With that being said, let's get into this week's nitty gritty news of travel. So hotels have seen an uptick in demand this summer. It hasn't been much, but they have seen a little bit, you know, as opposed to where we were in April. Occupancy rates are nowhere near they were a year ago, and it's a sad time for everyone in the hospitality industry. But I got faith. Labor Day weekend obviously being a huge weekend coming up for travel. Those numbers are down by a gruesome 66% from last year. And this is all data coming from the American Hotel and Lodging Association, AHLA. So they're saying here in this article about 65% of hotels are currently operating below their break even point. Meanwhile, roughly 66% of hotels remain at or below 50% occupancy levels, which is a crazy, crazy thought that some hotels and some resorts will have to close their doors this fall. But I'm hoping, I'm hoping that things get better. I'm hoping that people are gonna start thinking about travel. I hope people are gonna start committing to it. And I hope we start filling up hotels as safely as we can. I wanna go into a conversation about Airbnb. A couple of weeks ago, they made the news because they have officially shut down parties. Airbnb is this travel rental leader for the modern world. And they are cracking down on the partiers. If you had the bright idea to rent a massive Airbnb and bring a bunch of your friends. Airbnb has news for us. Has news for me. Has news for you. Has news for all of us. There is now a global ban on parties and events at all listings, and this will remain in effect indefinitely. Indefinitely. How do you put the genie back in that bottle? Okay, guys, we can now party at Airbnbs. When's that gonna happen? Parties are now prohibited, and you could be legally pursued and barred from using the platform if we violate the new policy. I'm not a rule breaker, I follow the rules as best I can, but I think that's a lot of people's mentalities when they rent Airbnbs. With that being said, with this new rule going in, I wanna kinda of cover the pros and the cons of using an Airbnb. So let's go over some of the pros. Reviews, you can always look at the reviews, I think they're pretty accurate, I think you can you know, trustworthy um, clientele that are leaving reviews. I think the support team is great. I think you could send them an email and, and in most cases it replies as far as getting reimbursement or troubles that you've been having. There's plenty of options. There's plenty of options that suit your needs. There's big houses, there's small houses, there's quaint houses, boutique houses, very design centric houses. There's all of these options, right? Houses that fit 16 people, houses that fit two people. It's great for larger groups. They're putting the cap at 16 people with this new band. And another thing, you have a kitchen. So if you wanna cook, you wanna make home, home cooked meals, it's great to have a kitchen in the place. It's a great spot to hang out. I just think having a kitchen kind of brings a whole different vibe and dynamic to your vacation or trip or gathering, whatever it may be. And, and, and another pro that people talk about a lot is you get to meet a local host and let's get into the cons the first one being you meet a local host I've had situations where it seems like more of a tour guide than it is a host or someone that's offering up their space I think people can enjoy that and I also think people can hate it another con would be the pictures aren't accurate the pictures don't always line up with the amenities that they list and then again the check-in process I think sometimes the the check-in process at Airbnbs can be long I think it can be confusing I think it's almost an inconvenience at times so those are some of the pros and cons of an Airbnb 
I think there's a lot of options on a hotel perspective, and I think there's a ton of options on an Airbnb, each of their own. United has finally stepped into the ring and made some noise. It's about time. Every major airline followed this change. Started with United, then went to American and Delta, of course, and now even Alaska. All of these major airlines have come together and they have finally sidelined change fees for domestic air tickets. Industry-wide, they're saying here that change fees netted airlines 2.8 billion in 2019. So hopefully this change doesn't mean higher ticket prices. On the bright side, booking cheap flights. If you come across a cheap flight, that's a good snag. Booking these flights on a whim is less risky, offering more flexibility and ease than ever before, should travel plans change. In the hopes that it's safe for everyone, get out there, start browsing, and let's start booking. Thank you guys so much for watching today. Thank you guys for being here. I appreciate all the love on these episodes and this video series. We will see you on Thursday. Peace.